what I will not be buying this year, a few beauty and beauty gadgets that I picked up this week, some fabulous pieces that I found that I cannot wait to show you, and what are your thoughts on gatekeeping in beauty and fashion? Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Shagura and I believe that when you feel good, you look good. So on this channel, I show you how to take fashion and use it as a tool to help you look and feel your best. Because I do a lot of research and learning on my own, I'm always so excited to bring it to you all and kind of teach you what I just learned. But I'm realizing in my excitement to teach you and show you and tell you what I've learned, that sometimes my videos may come off preachy as opposed to teachy. And the last thing I wanna do is become preachy. So I do think that sometimes I want to put in some videos that are not so teachy and just some really fun videos that we can have discussions about. So I usually schedule my videos a month in advance. I plan out my content for each YouTube video a month in advance. And today I had something totally different, but in effort to not be preachy, <laughs> I decided to do the things that I will not be buying this year. I actually got this idea from watching Politics and Fashion, and she always is very and extremely insightful. So when I saw her video, I said, yeah, maybe I could switch it up a bit. And I am totally copying her right now. I'm biting a little bit, <laughs> all right? If you haven't watched her video, go ahead and do that I'm sure you have because I know I watch as many of her videos as I can so the first thing that I am just not buying this year is sky high heel boots and shoes I love a heeled boot I always and forever will okay I am very much a boot girl I'm very much a heel girl the reality is as high as my heels used to be when I was 25 <laughs> does not work that well into my lifestyle now. I live in New York City. I'm walking around all the time. And honestly, I need my feet to be comfortable when I'm going from the subway to walking around to back to the subway. I just, I can't be in heels all day though. I do wear heels. They are always thicker and probably a little shorter. So what I'm finding is that my heels, my sky high heels are just sitting in my closet and I'm not wearing them. And if you have been following me for a while, you know that I am only trying to buy things that serve me. And I don't think that the sky high heels serve me like they used to. Now don't hold me to it. <laughs> don't hold me to it because something might come up and I might need them. <laughs> But right now, as for right now, I'm saying I am not buying huh, sky high heels. That's why I'm really loving the kitten heel um, trend right now. I'm really getting into that. And if I think about it, I really haven't bought sky high heels in quite a while. Now I do buy a heel now. It's not skinny and very tall. Within that same idea, I will also not be buying any shoes that are uncomfortable with the notion that I will wear them in and then they will be better because eight to nine times out of 10, I've gotten shoes that I think have to be worn in and they don't get worn in and they're just uncomfortable. And that's just not heels, right? I have a pair of J. Crew loafers that I just can't seem to, to get soft and able to wear comfortably. I have, I have a pair of Nike blazers with the silver check mark <laughs> that I bought specifically to wear with my Dior bag because I'm a bit extra and they're uncomfortable. The toe box on those shoes are so uncomfortable, which is interesting because they're a size bigger than what I usually get. They're just collecting dust in my closet. It was just a waste. So anything that's not comfortable, whether it's heels, sneakers, loafers, or flats, it's a waste of money. I don't wear it. I'm not doing it anymore. So if you have been following me for a while, you have seen my sunglasses collection, which was years ago. Um, and I, I think during the summer or the spring, I'll probably do an updated sunglasses collection, but I'm, I'm not saying I'm not buying no more sunglasses now. Let's, let's not get crazy. 
And I'm not even saying I'm not buying any more designer sunglasses. What I am saying is I'm going to try to buy a different type of sunglass. I realized that a lot of my sunglasses all kind of look the same. These have a flat top. These though are shaped a little different and are smaller also have a flat top. I actually forgot how big these are, but also a flat top. Or well, when do you know it? Another flat top. Amazing, but a flat top. And completely different, <laughs> I think, but also a flat frigging top. Just a few that I went and picked up out of my collection and it was like the easiest thing <laughs> because they're all flat. And you can see they're all different styles, but they all have the same top. So I'm really thinking that this year, maybe I should try something different. I do have these Celine sunglasses and they are very small. Um, and I didn't think they looked okay on my face, but now that I'm looking at them, I don't hate them. I had them for a while when they first got popular, if you will, and I didn't wear them, but now looking at them, I kind of like them. But also, even though they're cat eye, do they have a flat top? <laughs> wait, wait, do they have a flat top? Listen, listen, I don't know. My point is I'm going to try to be a little more diverse in my sunglasses selection. Another thing that I will not be buying this year is warm fragrances. I very much am the vanilla, um, warm, kind of sultry type of fragrance. And though I love those warm fragrances, I have enough. I have more than enough for one person. What I'm looking for now, I think, is more floral, a little more fresh, just to diversify what I usually wear. Because during the spring and summer, I really don't want anything warm, I want something fresh. It's funny because in one of my videos, and I can't remember for the life of me which video it was, I was talking about Portrait of a Lady, and a few of you guys kind of cussed me out playfully, not really. And for those of you who told me about myself, you were absolutely correct. You guys, I have been wearing Portrait of a Lady and it has really grown more and more on me. The whole time I was in Europe, I wore it um, just to like see if I loved it. I can't, I, and maybe that's it, but I can't tell you how much I love that fragrance. And that is not warm, there, it's not vanilla and, and, and marshmallow, it's none of that. It is a grown woman's fragrance. It also comes with a grown woman's fragrance price. <laughs> so I knew I had to get my money out of it. I absolutely love it now. I absolutely love it. So if you were one of those people who told me about myself and Portrait of a Lady, you were 100% correct. You could tell me in the comments, I told you so. So I'm looking for some more fresh scents. There's a few from Dior I was looking at. I'm not, I'm not gonna go overboard, you know, cause I really feel like during the pandemic, I went overboard with fragrances. I'm not doing that. But if I can get two or three to add to the two or three that I already have, I think I will be fine. Love to hear some of your favorite fragrances, either like Portrait of a Lady or something that's fresh or something that is a little lighter and floral. Next thing that I'm not Next buying this I'm year not is buying this year is anything that doesn't fit me in the store when I try it on. If you watched my last video, you saw that I went to go try some things on in Mango because they were having a sale and I went to go try on a knit. It was really cute, like a little knit top and a little knit a mini skirt together. It would have been great with some knee-high boots, right? But when I got in there <laughs> and pulled the skirt over my hips, the fabric, the poor fabric on that skirt was holding on for dear life. <laughs> it was not, it was just not made for me and it just wasn't fitting yet. And in my head, because I have been eating right and working out, and if you've been following me for a while, um, you know that I've had some weight loss and I've been, I kind of talk, I kind of talk about it, not really, but I do from time to time. So because I've been eating right and working out, I know that within the next month or two, that would actually fit and would look much better, right? And the fabric will be able to be like a little more loose. When I really thought about it, a few more months will be summer, a few more months, um, I might not want to wear it. There will always be something to buy. 
and to fill my closet with things that don't fit or with the prospect of trying to fit into them, I'm just not gonna do. On top of that, the mental game that that can play on my psyche, I'm not, I just, I can't do it. I need everything in my closet to fit well, make me feel good. I'm just not willing to play that game. So it fits me or it doesn't. And if it doesn't fit me, that's okay. And if it does, throw it in the bag. In that same vein, I am also saying that I am going to be done impulse shopping. And I've talked about this and I've been doing a fantastic job about this. I have realized that like many of us, I buy things with the notion that it's going to sell out. And the worst thing for me to see is when I want something, I see somebody have it or I, or I stumble across it because you guys know I do a lot of research and it is sold out in my size of the color I want. It's devastating. But again, the point of the matter is if I can't buy that, there will be something else that I would buy. I don't want to impulse shop to the point where I have a lot of things that I'm not going to wear. For example, the Marc Jacobs tote bag, I have worn that thing to death, so let me be clear on that. But I bought it because I thought that it was going to sell out. I had the leather one and also the canvas, right? And at the time, it was all the rage. But also, if you go back and look at those videos, you saw that I talked about how I did not like the print on those totes. I wish that, especially the leather one, I wish that it was just leather and the Marc Jacobs was just a little smaller. I never loved the fact um, that it said the tote bag on it. And not that I am all quiet luxury, let's, you know, let's be clear. The writing on it, it just wasn't my vibe. It's, it's interesting because I like the Louis Vuitton writing, but the Marc Jacobs, I just, I didn't like it. Uh, don't get me wrong, if you love that bag, it is a workhorse. It is fantastic. The leather one is a great quality. The leather is amazing. So don't let me deter you from not getting it. It was just the print on it was, it was not my favorite. But something that I should have gotten instead that was more along the lines of what I love is this tote from Sandro, which I spoke about many times in my videos. And honestly, I'm really thinking about still getting it. It's, I've seen it in person that it's gorgeous. And a couple of you said that you have it. It is beautiful leather. It's a little more expensive than the Marc Jacobs one. Not so much more than the leather Marc Jacobs one, but for that similar price point, I could have gotten something that I really love. That or the Demilier is really something that's more in my style. I love it. What is something that was in, you know, that mid range? I feel like that's what I should have done. Honestly, what I really want and I'm thinking about getting for travel, some people say do it, some people say don't, is the Louis Vuitton keep all. I want a strap because traveling, but some people say it's just uncomfortable. So I don't know. But my point is, I will not be impulse shopping just because I think something is going to sell out. Do I look like a news reporter with my hair like? this and this white blazer. <laughs> I just caught myself in the viewfinder. I'm like, girl, do you look like a news report? Gadgets and a few beauty bits that I bought this week that I have got to show you. Well, I got a few things at Sephora and I also got some new beauty tools that I want to show you. Not much at Sephora, but I still want to show you first thing I got was just a re-up. You guys saw in the last vlog I went to Sephora to get this and they did not have it. If you don't know what this is, I talk about it all the time. It's pretty much just like an in-shower moisturizer. I'm so dry and I hate that I've been without this for a while. It's just like a solid that turns to a liquid. It's one of my favorite things for my dry self. It just looks like this. Pretty much just do your shower routine, you wash, you shave, whatever. You rub this on your body, rinse it off a little bit, and then you are moisturized. Because I am extra dry, because I'm extra dry, after I do this, I follow it up with a water bomb and probably a lotion. These are two of my favorite products that I have been loving for the last few months. And like I said, if you're not new here, you have seen. Then I got these Topicals Brightening and Clearing Eye Mask. It's supposed to combat puffiness as well as darkness. So we shall see of her great things about these eye masks. I have had faded products before and I was a fan. So let's see how these work. If you've had these, let me know how you feel about them. And then finally, Finally, y'all decided to leave something in <laughs> Sephora so that I could actually try this. I've heard great things about Until Dawn. I've heard that 
Beyonce's makeup artist uses it during her concerts and all types of good things. Now, while I don't feel like I'm going to need it as long as Beyonce is going to need it, I would love to have my makeup look the way it looks at the beginning of the day. So I've heard great things about this Until Dawn. Can't wait to actually try it. Let me know if you have tried it. Now, if you have been following me for a very, very long time, you know that I was looking for a new flat iron for probably years at this point. I just didn't want to buy anything. I'm very particular about what I do to my hair and I had to do a lot of research. You guys, I've been working with my hair with this. <laughs> I've been doing my hair with this flat iron. I don't know how my hair honestly has survived. This, this is an FHI flat iron from the year, I don't know when, but as you can tell, <laughs> As you can tell, I have pushed this thing to the limits. It actually still works, but I feel like there's newer technology. I want to be able con to control the heat better. I do not flat iron my hair that hard simply because I am not the best with my hair as we've spoke about before and I don't want to um, cause any heat damage as much as I blow dry and flat iron my hair. My hair is still intact. I believe it's because I keep it moisturized. Don't flat iron that hard. But who knows? You guys let me know. I know I have a few um, hair professionals. I can't control the heat on this old one and I just want to something up to date with new technology. But this poor FHI has been working with me and dealing with my foolishness for years. <laughs> so this is what I decided to get. I've heard great things about it. I don't know if I got the right size. You are a hair professional. Let me know your thoughts on this and if I got the right thing. But it is so pretty. I did hear that this particular one doesn't get the roots that well. It comes with this glove that you can use, I believe, because this can also be used to curl your hair. I don't know the proper terminology, you guys. If you know I'm a fashion girl, I am not a hair girl, but I'm trying to learn that was one of my um, my New Year's resolutions that I wanted to learn. But anyway, so this is what I got. I know I have some heat professionals. I would love to know your opinion. Should I have gotten the other one? And also, what is the proper temperature that I should be flat ironing my hair on? I love that this, you can't really see, but I love that it has different options for um, temperature. Keep it in mind that I don't need my hair to be bone straight. I just need it to be a little straight so that I could throw it in a ponytail when I need to. So before I show you the next um, beauty gadget that I got, I wanted to show you this new face. I've had this for so long and when I first got it, I was so into it and I loved it and I used it and then I somehow fell off. And with this, you have to use it often in order to not only see the results, but to keep the results. So I'm hoping to get back to this. It has a few settings. They even have new ones now and I don't need the new one. I'm gonna stick with this and see, and see the results that I get. This is supposed to lift and sculpt using some microcurrents. And I'm all about the technology when it comes to beauty. So I'm excited to get back on this. You know, sometimes if it's not in front of your face, you don't use this. So I'm gonna to try to keep this in an area that I am reminded to use. And then, though it is not in yet, and I'm sure I'm gonna to have to insert it into this video, I also got a red light mask. So the light therapy device finally came in. I'm very excited to use this. You see where it says, medical grade anti-aging anti-aging this is what we need <laughs> all of us elder millennials this is what we need well hopefully so I've been seeing this all over social media and I am they got me okay they got me I'm very excited to try it I've done a lot of research uh, and hopefully I was doing the right type of research so with this one you were supposed to be able to do this for 10 minutes a day I think three or four times a week and you were supposed to get great results. It works for anti-aging, it helps with discoloration, all types of beautiful things that I could definitely use. It comes with instructions which I'm going to need, I, again I cannot wait to use this. You have plugs, and you, why do I have so many plugs? Okay I really have to. <laughs> I really have to play with this because I don't know what's happening. I do have a bit of discoloration on my face, but mostly I want to use this for um, collagen reproduction. They're supposedly supposed to help with that. Like I said, I'm a geriatric millennial <laughs> and I could always use a bit of 
anti-aging. And a few of you actually told me that you also have a red light mask and you love it. So I'm hoping to love this. And the plan with this is, you guys, is to update you every two weeks. I am going to try to make sure that I have the same lighting in the same area to show you the before and the after. I've seen some before and afters, and some of them are absolutely spectacular, and other ones of them are in different lightings and different settings, and that doesn't really help. Starting in two weeks from now, and see if this really helps. This is not cheap, so I feel like it would be nice to see somebody that hasn't been sent this, that spend their own money in this, give a nice opinion. So yes, friend, this is just a few things that I got that I wanted to show you. I always value your opinion. Let me know what you think about any of this, particularly the red light mask and the flat iron. Have you gotten good results from the faded? Have you tried this? This is my holy grail. Let me know about anything here and if there are any beauty gadgets that I should try. been so long since I vlogged it seems very weird but I did have to leave the house today there were some things that I wanted to do but most importantly I was gonna go shopping in Soho and I'm gonna take you along with me I came in here to try this on and uh, yeah my thigh said no my thigh said not yet girl not yet so I'm not gonna show you because it was a mess but I did try to try something on they have some fantastic sales happening right now absolutely fantastic also a little promotion for the coat and the boots the cape boots There are some things that make me extremely happy in life. It's just the little things, right? Cooking and baking, listening to jazz, reading my favorite book, and shopping, <laughs> right? So I found a few things this week that I could not wait to show you guys what I found. So though I am a person who appreciates color, this is a lot, right? However, I can see some people really making this work and it looking stunning. If you are a person who loves color, this Christopher John Rogers dress was originally almost a thousand dollars and it is on sale for $398. If you are somebody who loves color and Christopher John Rogers, this is a great time to get this dress. So in last week's video, when we went shopping, I showed you the Prada kitten heels and the flats, and they are absolutely stunning. They are also fairly expensive. I ran into these Tony Bianca, Bianco, excuse me, kitten heels that I think are just fabulous. I'm trying to figure out if I should get the black version or this brown version i'm leaning towards getting the brown version but in the black color or maybe both i don't know <laughs> but i think these are so cute very much on trend and so darn chic they also come in different colors they also have different options um, that don't have any accoutrements on the front <laughs> they have like a gold and silver and i have been looking at tony bianco for quite a while i just haven't gotten anything I feel like these shoes are my be my first purchase and they are so well priced. Again, if you watched the last video when we went shopping, I showed you this purse in silver. I have not been able to stop thinking about it. And when I went to the website, they had three left in silver and I kept thinking about it and thinking about it until it sold out. <laughs> so they also have this option, which I think is just stunning and they have it in black which I actually got and I'll show you guys in the next video 
But if you are stuck on the silver, you could find them for cheaper. Poshmark, they are cheaper than the original price. I wish I would have known that before I got the black, but I'm absolutely in love with the black. It is all fully leather. That little gold part on there, I believe it's real gold. It is just absolutely beautiful. I am always on the lookout for places that have beautiful clothing for extended sizing. I understand that it can be so hard to find just cute clothes in an extended size. So I told you guys before that Reformation has some really good clothing. They can do better, but they are on their way. I feel like this beautiful silver see-through shirt is just really sexy. Look how beautiful she looks. And this black pants and the vest is just so bossy. It's beautiful. Um, this goes from a 1X to a 3X, I believe. And Reformation in general has some cute things, but I was really looking for... Um, extended sizes, the nice, beautiful, trendy pieces that weren't too expensive for the women who need extended sizes. This color suit from Mango is absolutely beautiful. I do not think that I could wear this purple. I wish that it was just a little different. Me and purple just don't work. But for somebody who has the right undertones, I feel like this is so good. Yellow would probably work better on me, but this purple is just gorgeous. Of course, they also have it in black, which is very standard and also beautiful. But if you want to make a statement, this purple is the way to go. I thought this was very interesting. I spoke about something very similar a very long time ago, probably years ago on this channel. But I feel like this is a perfect solution for those people who have a classic speedy and don't carry it because it might be annoying to have to hold in your hands all the time because the classic speedies don't have straps. This is an encasement for the speedy. They have one for the 25 and the 30. In fact, this website has encasements for several things. You should go check it out. It's actually a very cool idea. They have the encasement for different colors. So if you have the original speedy, um, with the lighter color leather they also have this encasement in a lighter color i think this is a genius idea and a great way to make use of the things that are already in your closet with the trends of tortoise being in accessories like combs and brushes i thought this would be a good addition to those of you who love that kind of look i've seen some beautiful tortoise brushes that you can put your initials on and all types of things i'll show you guys in a later video but I feel like this is a cool little travel case that would match that same aesthetic. It looks like it fits plenty of things. It actually comes with these three extra bags. So if you are traveling, you can either put everything in the bags and then pack it, or you could use it individually. I think this is a very great idea. I think that it's so trendy and very classic at the same time. So what do you guys think about the few things that I found this week? How do you feel about the speedy encasement? This beautiful clutch, I love that clutch. Um, the shoes, these little shoes, I'm telling you guys, I really think I'm gonna get them. And what have you found this week? The discourse around gatekeeping is very interesting. Years ago, you were called out if you were gatekeeping uh, a product that you were using or wearing. But now I'm seeing the pendulum kind of shift where many folks are saying that they think gatekeeping is necessary in this day and age. I have my own opinions, but let's talk about it a little closer. Gatekeeping has been such a buzzy topic for the last few years that in 2022, Vogue named it the word of the year. It's actually interesting because the initial meaning of gatekeeping um, was referring to those in control of institutional power. And now it means anyone withholding information, no matter what we're talking about, whether it's a restaurant, whether it's fashion, if you're not telling, you are gatekeeping. From influencers not wanting to tell you what they're wearing or where they got it from, right? Uh, to friends and family not willing to share their favorite fragrances and perfumes. To folks on the street completely ignoring news outlets when asked about their outfit. Gatekeeping has become such a big 
topic of discussion. But why now? In 2018, the medium put up this article stating that gatekeeping doesn't make you God, it just makes you an a-hole. <laughs> this was in 2018, right? And then in 2022, Business Insider did an article that said, the internet really hates gatekeeping, social media's new go-to insult. The truth is you're probably a gatekeeper too. On past years, gatekeeping was really seen as something bad. So what changed? Now, why is everyone on social media a very proud gatekeeper? There are a few reasons why I think that this is. But the biggest reason, in my opinion, is what I spoke about uh, in this video, right? I spoke about how we're all looking exactly the same and not in the way of trends um, and what's trendy in 2024, 23, more so in the way that we are all buying the exact same item. So everybody has the Sambas as opposed to the Gazelles, a very similar sneaker but you had to have the Samas to kind of be in the know and to be part of that crowd, right? Another example, though I am still salty that I didn't get it, is the Jack Moose purse, that beautiful silver Jack Moose uh, clutch. Everyone has it, or not everyone, but a lot of the social media influencers had it or have it and any other silver purse, no other silver purse would do. Not gonna lie to you guys, I'm still very salty about that purse. I thought it was absolutely gorgeous. So at some point, we all kind of started to look like clones, and I really believe that people got tired of it and just wanted to gatekeep and not tell anybody what they were wearing or where it was from. People are just tired of not feeling special and unique. There's actually this theory uh, called the optimal distinctiveness theory, and it pretty much explains how people want to belong but also want to feel unique. So you want to be part of the fashion and the trends and look and feel good, but you also really want to stand out on your own. Some folks, uh, a lot of folks, most people I would think, um, really take it personal when they aren't seen as individually or in, as an individual, excuse me, or as unique as they feel like they are. And I really feel like this is such an interesting topic because I can truly see both sides, though I do favor one side. In most cases, I am not a gatekeeper. I'll tell you my fragrance, where I got it from, things to layer it with, when I wear it, how long I had it. I'll give you all the deets, okay? <laughs> Same thing about clothing if or, or accessories. If you ask me where I, I got my shoes from, I'm going to tell you what size I got, where to get them, how to get them on sale. If they're too expensive for you, I'll give you some dupes. I am just a shearer, right? I like to share. I'm also painfully aware that that does also come from a point of privilege, right? If you spend $400 on your favorite fragrance and it smells delicious and you don't want to tell anybody, I completely understand because that thing wasn't cheap. I, however, they have a lot of fragrances. So if I feel like someone is wearing my fragrance and I know I'm going to be around them, I have the opportunity to wear a different fragrance. So I completely understand that it is definitely from a point of privilege. I get that. I just happen to have a lot of knowledge in certain areas. And because I believe that I am naturally a sharer and a teacher, I want to give my knowledge as much as I can. It actually makes me so happy and gives me so much joy when I'm talking to somebody and they say, oh my gosh, girl, where'd you get that sweater? And I'm able to tell them where they got the sweater from and they're able to buy it. And then I text you and be like, girl, show me how you style the sweater. That actually gives me so much joy. And I don't know how else to explain it, but it's, it's like, the best thing to me. So I personally don't get upset um, if I see someone buy the same thing that I got. Do you guys know or do you remember that that Sex in the City, I think it was the movie, when Samantha turned up to the movie premiere wearing the same dress as I think it was Miley Cyrus? Yeah, and she just smiled and went to go take a picture with her. I feel like that would be my same reaction. Hey girl, we're here, we both got good style. 
Let's not trip over it. That's just me though. I truly get unfiltered, exceedingly happy <laughs> and joyous when I make other people happy. So if there's something, uh, even a little bit, like a lipstick I can tell you that I'm wearing or what nail polish I have on, if that makes you a little happy, that actually makes me so extremely happy. And that's why I went to school for a few things, right? If you're not new here, you know I went to school to be a teacher. I've also went to school to be a counselor. And then I went to fashion school. All the things that make people happy. And on the other side, I am a gatekeeper when it comes to other things like my mental health. For example, my, my weight loss journey, I probably will never discuss that in depth. I tried one time and I talked about it um, a while ago um, when I was losing weight before and it, it messed me up because people would make questions or people would ask questions like, girl, why are you eating that? You ain't supposed to be eating that. Or they would say or give me advice about not eating cert certain things or, and, or make comments about my body. And I just said, you know what? I'm not gonna do this for my mental health. And it sucks because I feel like that's something that everyone can, um, that we could all kind of do together because I know that weight loss is not just something that I have to deal with, but for my mental health, and others, I, I just, that's something that I'm gonna have to gatekeep, right? And then the other thing is, you will probably never ever, 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 ever see my family because I'm not putting my family out there. I'm, I'm keeping them, I'm gatekeeping that part of my life from my videos. You don't need to see my family. You just need to learn and know about the fashion and where to get the latest bags, right? It's just, again, for mental health because the internet, the internet is crazy, you guys. So, I don't know, like I said, I see both sides and I would love to know your thoughts on gatekeeping. Are you a gatekeeper? Why or why not? What are your thoughts on that red light mask? Did I get duped? I cannot wait to, to try it and see what happens. What are your thoughts on gatekeeping? Do you think it's necessary? You think that we're oversharers now? Let me know. I really actually want to know. I love this conversation around this. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, like, comment, subscribe, share the video, and I will see you in my next video.